that's the red flag, man, that is Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, please pick up your paper. Um, remember, there's 210 students, uh, so it really gets very large very quickly. So if you could t pick up your paper, that'd be great. Uh, remember, there's no class this Thursday. Once again, there's no class this Thursday, okay? So don't come to class this Thursday. If you come, this entire place will be empty, okay? So please do not come again to class on Thursday. You have an optional trip if you like to go on a museum trip and do a Gorilla Girls uh, presentation. So you just write a one-page uh, summary of the museum, plus you also clip the ticket and, or the brochure to it. And, and uh, if you can cite John Berger or the Gorilla Girls, that would be awesome, OK? And so it's best if you turn it in on Tuesday, because remember, this is the last week. Uh, it's coming up the last couple weeks of class. And people are graduating. So um, you can immediately turn it in on Tuesday, and then you get your extra credit points immediately. So that's kind of like the best thing for you, OK? So uh, all right, so that will be on Tuesday, okay? So if you have a one, again, it's optional. It's not that many points. It's like one point. So it doesn't really make a big difference, okay? So, but if you want to do it, you get your one point. It's like one point, so it's up to you, okay? All right, guys, let's uh, start awkward. Uh, let's do current events, and let's start awkward black girl, okay? What... Um, your papers were very good. The average was 78% in class. So that was the, uh, I think 78 was the average and 79 was the median. So like 50% over 79 and 50% under, okay? So it, I think the papers were quite good. Um, but we, there were kind of consistent problems, well, some issues. And uh, I think uh, probably Miss Connie uh, is actually doing a, a Revision workshop. So if you want to do a revision, um, you don't turn it into me. I, I don't accept revisions. But if you want to go in for a workshop, it's optional. You can do it w with her, and she can help you improve your paper. Okay, so that's an optional uh, thing you want to do if you want. Mr. Benjamin. Does that workshop make up for Yeah, sure. Of course. Yeah, yeah. And it's optional, right? So you don't have to do it. But let's say you want to bring in your paper and show them. You know, she'll, she'll happily help you with your revisions, right? It doesn't, you don't turn in again, doesn't do anything to your grade at all. It's just like, just to see, right? Okay. Also, I'd like to recommend you guys to, uh, if you want, you should try to publish out your paper, okay? So um, my recommendation is try to publish it out if it's independent research, okay? All right, let's start Awkward Black Girl. Is this what it's come down to? Me and Jay need some privacy. Private? But you brought DJ with us. You do see these cupcakes, right? Jay, can we please talk? Jay, we're going to talk, right? I want to answer this question, but some other time. Hey, guys, can we talk later? I'm really busy. Come on, Jay, I just want to talk. Hey, I think she just wants to stick on me. Actually, I don't know what I want. <laughs> Bitches be nosy. Partying with Pitbull? What's that noise? I don't know. I'm just getting my JLo on to this new Zumba workout DVD. What the fuck? You won't believe what just happened. YJ was coming to see me, and then when I got home, guess who was waiting for me? Freddie Prince Jr.? What? No, Cece. Fred! And Darius. Why was Darius there? Well, you had to give Fred a ride or something. Anyway, Fred finally said he likes me. And then YJ came. With cupcakes. Oh my god! What did you do? I did what I do best. I ran. Jenny, you have to stop running from your problems. You need to address them head on. Hold on, I've got another call. Hello? Hey, Cece, it's Fred. You busy? Uh, kind of, sort of. What's up? I need some advice. On Jay. I figured you'd be the best person to call. Hey, Fred, I'm on the other line. Please pick up your papers. You're coming in. Please pick up your papers. Oh, my God. That was Fred. Jay, he's calling me now. This is 
crazy! You have to talk to him, it's ridiculous! I will! Soon? No, you're talking to him right now! No, Cece! Fred? Yeah? I've got Jay on the line. You guys need to talk. I guess I'll start. Jay, what I was trying to tell you tonight is I'd like to take you on a real date. If that's okay with you. Oh, fucking shitty reception! Oh, I'd like that. I'm losing you guys! Jay, I'll call you okay. back! Okay! Fred and I are finally going out on a date! Well, okay. congratulations, Jay. I'm... Oh! I mean, no, Jay! Hello? Cece? Yeah, hey, what happened? I accidentally told Jay that Fred asked me out. Fred asked you out? Yeah, but what about Jay? Well, what about him? The fact that you accepted Fred's date means that you made a decision. That's awesome! Call me with the deets! Later, girl! Was it that easy? The guy I've been crushing on forever just asked me out. So, why do I feel so weird? This is it. A regular black date. No CC tips, just me and Fred. This way. Yeah, totally. Dear Sushi Restaurant, thank you for not being Red Lobster. Stop smiling. Don't look too eager. Hi, Jay. Hey. You look beautiful. Did I just call a man beautiful? Thanks. <laughs> See anything you want? Whoa, is he reading my thoughts? On the menu. So right, um I'm kind of torn between the spicy tuna and the salmon. Get more. We can share. Okay. Sounds good. Why am I so nervous? Ain't shit on this menu. Hey! Hi. Can I take your order? Yeah, we'll have the uh, spicy tuna roll, salmon roll, and albacore sushi. Sure. I'll be right back. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> I know. It's like falling asleep at a funeral. Awkward. It's like losing a boss lady's braids and keeping a straight face. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> it's like date two friends at the same time. Awkward. <laughs> Maybe if we didn't look at this as a date and more like friends getting to know each other better. It'd be less awkward. Friends, I, I can handle that. Did you really fall asleep at a funeral? <laughs> Good people are so boring. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. So, uh, what do you want me to do? Uh, what? No, tell me what I need to do. What do you recommend? I try the dynamite, 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 dynamite. Uh. <laughs> okay, cause like, cause you're Jay and I'm Jay, so it's JJ. So you know, dynamite. It's good times. Yeah, let, let's do it. Let's have a dynamite roll. 
Yeah. Our hands down is like the top 25 days. Really? Okay. 23, 24. Okay, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I had a great time tonight. Me too. I hate awkward goodbyes. What am I supposed to do? Y'all not nigga! Good night, Jay. Just be honest with them. And be honest with yourself. Fred! When we first met, I honestly never thought we'd be here. It's crazy. Sometimes you connect with people that you never thought you'd connect with beyond the surface and I really love being your friend and I appreciate you being that to me from the very beginning so can we just say that way yeah Jay that's what you want Val Dean ENT invites you to experience life. Seller! Okay. And uh, Mr. Benjamin, you said you did the music for that? Yeah, that scene. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Okay, awesome. Congrats, Mr. Benjamin. That's awesome. All right. All right, guys, let's do current events. Um, I think you guys all did really great on uh, your papers. The average was 79, 78 or 79, and the median was also 78, 79. So if you did a better than 79, that's, that's, that was the average of the entire class, which is pretty good high average. And 50% uh, over, 50% under, OK? So. Sure. Um, yes. Uh, you know, it, it's it's hard because obviously I, I didn't grade a lot of them, right? So I I can't speak on someone else's you know, grades. That's the only issue. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So uh, they were actually very good papers. And uh, again, uh, uh, d did you guys find the workshop helpful? No. What did you do during the workshops? You saw you saw it was helpful. Okay, yeah. what did you guys do? We learned the Chicago style, which is insane. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. It was weird. Like the the MBID thing. I, I just never. Okay. Um, well, if Mr. Renja, if you don't know, um, it's kind of like we're kind of the whole entire university is now is doing that actually now. So the the workshops, right? So it's called writing across the disciplines, and so. Basically, history has to do with it, woman studies, anthropology. So it's not, it's not something that we have a choice anymore. It's pretty much they're doing it across. So if you guys haven't taken that workshop, um, you will be taking other majors because it's a, it, it's a new thing now that the whole entire university is doing, which is, yeah. So the good thing is you, if you've done it once, you probably don't have to do it again, right? So, but if you take history uh, one, I guess, you have to do it again. But maybe you can get out of it because you've said you've done it before, OK? Um, no, no, well, uh, they, it, no, it's, it's different per, yeah, yeah. But the, but you know how they're doing workshops? The workshop system is now, it's, now they're doing sociology, now they're doing an, an history. Now it's becoming like required. Yes, within Chaz, within Chaz. It's, it's, uh, it's called writing across the disciplines. So even if I didn't want to, I had to do it. So that was a kind of a, it's, it's every, every, every single major now is doing it. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Question? Okay. All right, guys. I take out a sheet of paper. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, current events. Anything current events, guys? Did everyone pick up their paper? Please, there's 210 people, so please walk down here and pick up your paper because it's 210 students. Um, I can only hold it so long, and then I'm just going to recycle them. Okay? All right, guys. Any current events that you want to talk about? Yes. 
Miss Summer? Oh, testing. Um, so Oregon yesterday and Pennsylvania today um, both made it unconstitutional to ban gay marriage in those states. Um, and the cover of the Times this week was rape in higher education. And so they talked a lot about that. So those are some current events. Excellent. Thank you for bringing that up. That is an ongoing issue. Um, if Guys, if you don't know, there is this issue of rape on campus. And Ms. Summers bringing it up. That's a great point. Um, apparently, one in five uh, women are accosted, attempted accosted, or fully accosted. And also, I want to also say that it's not just a gender thing, because also men are also being accosted, right, by other women and other men as well. So, and uh, they, apparently, they say the men are not under. The women are under reporting, but also the men are underemploying. So that that reporting, that's a great comment. And um, also, if you want to hear more about stuff like that and um, how we're trying to change that, you should come to the Senate meeting tomorrow night at six thirty. All right, and Ms. Summer, you have an organization. Did you want to tell them so they oh. could join your yes? Um, Lean in. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just started a club called Lean In. It's a gender equality club. So if you guys find this stuff interesting um, and you want to talk about it more and learn more about it, um, we just started and we welcome everyone. So um, our it's Thursdays at six o'clock in Surge One Sixty Seven, One Seventy Two. Uh, sorry, One Seventy Two Surge. What time again? So one more time. Six o'clock at on Thursday. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. All right, excellent. All right, anything else for current events? Uh, yes, Mr. Benjamin, um, pass the I'm, mic that way. <laughs> yes. I'm pretty loud. Okay. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yeah, yes. Yeah. All right. So, um, one second. This is a tweet from CNN, and I retweeted it. Uh, <laughs> bomb okay. blast at a busy intersection kills four people in Kenya, Nigeria, more casualties expected, police right. said. I feel like because of the incident that happened in Nigeria, it was Excellent. That's a very important current event. Uh, Nigeria is the most populated country in uh, in Africa, and also we have a lot of Nigerian students here, yeah, like sure. a lot. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. All right. Uh, yes, back there. Back there. Yes. If you and whoever has the thing, can you push it back? Or if you if you have a loud voice, this has no battery. So. Pass it back, pass it back. So, huh? yeah, just, just go there. <laughs> Anyone else for the current event while we're waiting? Yes, Mr. Raymond. Your UCR or? In gen right, right. But, Ms. but Mr. Aaron, um, UCR is voted number one as most price conscious in America. Okay, so let's talk about that current event. Mr. Aaron said that you guys, uh, on the one hand, they said uh, 2014. Uh, they're, they're uh, Mr. Aaron's uh, grab. You guys are the most in debt. But on the uh, flip side, you guys go to the number one most cost conscious, number one in the, in the nation, UCR. So let's talk about that. What do you guys think? Right. You are the least in debt. Least in debt. Okay, time. Let's do that. Let's see. Time. Magazine. University. California. Riverside. Number one. Ah. One. Mr. Aaron, what do you think about that? Uh, can someone give him or the mic about what? It, do you want to say it louder? So, what was your what's your opinion? I I think that you brought up a really great point. We're number one, guys. Look up there. That's awesome. All right, go ahead, Mr. Aaron. Right. 
That, that, that's a great point. Um, did you guys hear what Mr. Aaron said? Yeah. Um, and also, um, remember, guys, if you keep on going with a PhD or MD, it's like two hundred or 300000 I have lots of friends who owe 300000 I have lots of friends. Um, so, yeah, that, thank you for bringing it up and bringing it up. So, yes. Also, going off of that, um, a lot of the older generations are, like, pissed off at us for not buying houses right away and gaining all the assets. But when you think about it, we're paying six times as much of, for an education when we enter three times the unemployment market. Like, it's impossible to buy a house, let alone even just buy a car. So, and that's, like, the older generation's fault because they have so much stuff up early on because they didn't know what they were doing. So, I mean... Like, I don't know, that's just, like, the truth. Like, that, that's a great point. So and, and guys, keep in mind that, uh, you know, Cal State were free, was free, right, for them. That, that generation, yeah. it was free, all the Cal State's free, all the junior college were free, right? You could so, work for the summer. And yes. Done, yeah, you, it's so. literally just uh, one summer, you finish all, yeah. right? But, but again, that previous generation, it was free. So you make a wonderful point. Yes. I'd have to disagree, Dr. Ron. Okay. Do you want to do this? Or? No, I don't need Okay. Right. It's so I guess it's varied for different people. I guess. Yeah. So good comment, Mr. Aaron. Yes. And then does someone? Uh, yes. Uh, I, you next, and then Mr. Aaron. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so in Texas, there was a 19-year-old guy who got um, life in prison for selling pot brownies. What? How is that possible? I. How's that? <laughs> um, how that be? They said because um, the brownie was considered like the whole thing was considered weed. Okay. In a way, they so did like, it by weight. The or? weight, yeah. Now he's like in life for pr like, yeah, in I, prison I would for think life. Is his uh, lawyer uh, objecting or sort of? Um, I didn't look that far okay. into it. But thank you. It's, it's unusual. I thought it was interesting. In Colorado, it's it's not uh, it's legalized. Okay, thank you. Good point. All right, uh, back to Mr. Aaron. Pass the that way. <laughs> Pass the mic that way. Yes, Mr. Aaron. Basically, like, learn from the generations before you. You know, um, any opportunity you get, summer jobs, yes. take advantage of that. Um, things on the side, like if you love photography, you know, a lot of graduating seniors are trying to take graduation pictures. So do it, like, at a cheaper price than the studios and Great. stuff like that. You know, I mean, um, Dr. Bond was saying how she was working, like, part-time and uh, teaching and all that. So, I mean, you guys utilize your skills and talents. And, you know, it, it goes a long way because it builds up your resume and also, like, you'll help pay for your schooling and all that. So just don't make the same mistakes that we did and all that. And you guys should be f pretty good. So. Who's a, a first, second, third year? All right, so that's advice from your graduating class. So keep that in mind, okay? Keep that in mind, okay? So I, I do want to share a little bit about how I did it. I, I talked to Mr. Aaron actually very extensively um, sometimes during break. And... I actually graduated uh, with no debt, with a PhD. And I want to show you how I did it. Um, because, Mr. Aaron, you brought it up, so I'm going to show you how I did it. Um, I worked in a restaurant uh, growing up. Uh, so I've always been working. So I had this like uh, massive like work ethic just coming in since I've been working since I was eight years old. And so when I went to UCLA, I actually just worked at the library, right? And then I worked it, worked it, and I, you know, I, I sometimes did parking stuff. And then um, the minute I graduated UCLA, I actually started substitute teaching. And substitute teaching uh, started paying a lot because back then usually it wasn't that expensive, right? So I would I would do several districts, and then the, the extra money I'd have, I would put it towards financial aid, right? Anything like so, one actual full uh, check would go to financial aid, right? So that paid that off, and then I got my first master's in public policy and cultural studies. And what I did is I continued uh, teaching, and what happened is on I would work six days a week, and I'd work on Saturday, and I would teach rich kids on Saturday. So I'd teach SATs, uh, writing, uh, journalism, blah, whatever they asked me to do, I would take it, right? I never said no, right? So again, I took two of those paychecks, and I and on my debt load for my master's was around 30000 back then, which was a lot back then. 30000 is a lot. Um, 
30,000, right? That was a lot because it's, it's a private school, it's Claremont Graduate University, which is, it's, you know, it's 50,000 a year, okay? So uh, I worked on campus as well, and so, so I got to grad school, grad school was eight years, at, at 30,000 a year, right? So I have lots of friends who owe 100, 200,000. So you're probably asking, how did I get through grad school, eight years of grad school, without owing any debt? What happened was I, um, I have this incredible work ethic, and so I was given this opportunity of getting a scholarship for the first, first two years, and then I got, uh, I saw an, uh, an opening. So like, Mr. Aaron, I saw an opening like in the ad, like, okay, they were doing some like WAST, um, it was reviewing this entire university, and they're asking for a university uh, instructor, I mean, a university researcher. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll do this job in the summer because I need to work, right? And I, I do these other jobs, right? So the job required me to do 30 hours of work, but I put in 60 hours of work a week, right? And it was incredible, a, a lot of work, because I had to review all of UCR diversity, right? And I had to read. So uh, Mr. Benjamin, they asked me to read like 10 articles, but I read 62 articles, right? And um, I did it all the time, and what happened was the vice chancellor um, saw my work, and I never met her before, and she said, hey, um, would you want to work for me? And I, again, I never met her before. I just like, okay. And then she also asked me, would you want to publish with me? Which I did as well, okay? Um, I asked around. I said, is this a good idea to the chair of the department? He's like, are you nuts? She's like world famous. And so uh, what happened was she has many grad assistants during that time. And, you know, they cycle through. She'd hire them, and then they wouldn't work that much or whatever reason, and then she'd fire them. Whatever, whatever. they wouldn't continue, right? But she consistently hired me every quarter, including the summer, for eight years, okay? And so... Um, while I was working hard, because again, I, I really want to convey to you, they pay me 30 hours, but I worked 60 hours, okay? So it's not like I was doing, like I was working beyond what they asked me, because again, I wanted to pay for debt, my tuition, I, I want, and I knew the next 10 weeks coming, next 10 weeks is another, what, 5,000, right? So I had to do it, and then I did it, and then, uh, and I always did extra jobs. So, Mr. Aaron, I, I taught on Saturday. I taught on Sunday. I would go to, like, rich people houses and, like, just really crazy stuff. Like, I'd go to, like, these super rich people's, like, houses and, like, I'd help them teach writing or, like, SATs or something, right? And then also I would teach at Mount Sac and then I would go to the really low-income Southeast Asian communities where it's high illiteracy, right? Where, where you know, there was gunshots and stuff like that. And I would go to their homes and help them as well. So it was a lot of highs and lows. And I learned a lot about teaching at that time. And, and then at, at the eighth-year mark, I I realized that, because my friends are my friends, and we never discussed our debt load, but I realized that I had no debt, okay? But I didn't have debt uh, because I did, I, someone gave me money or something or someone. I actually worked 60 hours a week in a 30-hour job. So that, that's just, I, I want to reveal, like, how I did it, right? And even now, I, I always, I, I really don't say no to work, right? So um, so please come after, talk to me. I will talk, tell you how I did it, and... Um, I really want to share, like, how I did it. So if you, like, Mr. Aaron, you actually just gave us a great idea, like, taking pictures, right? If Aaron, Mr. Aaron, if you have any other ideas for your classmates to make money now, uh, tell us now. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I, I'd use that example because that's kind of what I'm doing right now, just taking pictures for a lot of my graduating um, friends. Um, I mean, if you play sports, go coach kids. You don't even have to do it for, like, a pay. Just kind of volunteer to do that. Get something on your resume. Um, doesn't take much out of you. Uh, also, if it's like if you're working at a lot of places nearby campus, um, they, I mean, obviously they want to cater towards college students, so they want to hire college students, but just be mindful of like the amount of time of work you do to the, like the benefits, like is it going to help you in the long run? Um, is the pay like worth it? I mean, obviously like most places are minimum wage around here, but you, you kind of want to you, you want to get that work experience, you want to make that money, but you also don't want to sacrifice your grades because especially like your first, second years, your your grades are kind of in a critical state because, I mean, once, you, once you're once you in your third, fourth year, it's going to be hard to get your GPA back up. So. Okay, thank you, Mr. Aaron. Do you have some tips for us? Oh, that's, oh, well. Um, although it's kind of like irrelevant for some students now, um, my little sister, she is just graduating from high school, and I tell her to go to JC first. What do you think? I did that. Yeah. I did that. Yeah. Ooh, JC. Hands for students. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> it, took me, it took me a while to get out of JC. It took me four years rather than just the average two. But honestly, like, I am 
half in debt of what everyone else is right now, and I just couldn't be happier about that. Anna. Guys, what did you guys think? I thought that was excellent advice to go to JC. Guys, what's the tuition to USC or private school? It's like, isn't it seventy thousand, right? Seventy thousand, right? Seventy times four, they owe two hundred eighty. Guys, you're twenty one, you owe two hundred eighty. But again, has does economics majors? Do you know what com uh, math majors? Do you guys know what compound interest is? The, you have to look it up tonight. If you don't know what compound interest is. You please, it's going to scare you, but if you sign a financial aid account, but you're two, 280 is going to jump really quickly to like 480, 580, 680. Please, Mr. Chris, can you help us? Yes. Uh, I just have two words of I'm a graduating senior, and uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, so, one thing is a lot of people come to school expecting it to figure out what they want to do with their lives in school. Um, I personally found that was not true for me. I had to drop out of school to actually figure out what I wanted to do with my life. Um, I dropped out of school and moved back with my parents for a year and then came back here and declared my major and now I'm graduating. And now I know a field that I want to go into and I'm very much more driven now than I was before. Um, which is, makes a big difference in school and your career if you know where you want to go and you have a vision of what you want to do. So I just want to point out, if you don't ha know what you want to do in your college, you're kind of wasting your time, in my opinion, but it's a little bit harsh, I know. To, like It's a harsh reality for some people, but that's genuinely the way I feel. Also, um, it's really easy to get involved on campus, and a lot of people don't take advantage of clubs here. And I must say, I've been involved in two clubs over the past year, and I could have easily had leadership opportunities just by going to the meetings. And I didn't know anybody at the meetings before I went. And I could have easily gotten really involved, and I did. And I'm just saying, like, it's not hard to get involved, and no one does it here. So just go and get involved on your campus. You're here. Have a social life with, you know, clubs and things like that. You know, this you know, lovely lady just is starting camp at our uh, club right now. And, yeah, so lean in. So go, go check it out, you know. Excellent. Does anyone else have advice for our class? Anyone and I else? actually uh, yes. piggyback off uh, what he was just saying. Okay. I think that failure is honestly the best lesson. And I mean, obviously, you don't want to fail all your classes. But I mean, you know, it's kind of like what he said. He's now a lot more driven than he was earlier. And I, I agree. Like a lot of seniors now, we're, we're kind of just like, if we only could have gone back to fix those grades or like our mentality I mean yeah obviously it's college you know you want to experience things you want to have fun um, this is the time when you learn a lot about yourself when you grow but it's also like think about your future too because I mean it, it goes by pretty quick so excellent oh yes coming back there yes you stand up for me yes pass, pass the mic that way guys so if anyone has any advice, the especially the graduating seniors, we would love to hear it, graduating seniors. Um, when I was in high school, um, I had a free period in, uh, for six periods. So every, every hour, every day, because um, I couldn't really get a job because where I was from, I lived in the desert. And it would, it would probably take me about 45 minutes to get to anywhere, like a store or something like that. So what I would do is my job was basically doing scholarships and also volunteering. So I would volunteer at a hospital, and I would do scholarships in any, in any health-related scholarship and just tell them, you know what, I'm serious, I'm doing this and that. And, like, it's tough for now in college because you don't really have enough time because you have a lot of stuff to do. But, like, we live in a generation where we have so many distractions. Like, we have to start realizing what's – what are distractions like our phones, TV, stuff like that? I like last year I devoted about like eight hours of uh, distractions, and I got kicked out of school for that. And I got back, and I was more serious. My grade average last year was probably like a D plus. Now it's uh, now it's an A's, and now like I I just can't stop studying, and like I'm studying about eight hours now, other than watching two for eight hours. So you guys have to. Um, See why your distractions and make you a better student, and just see as writing uh, essays for scholarships as a job because I did it and I got um, I think eight thousand dollars altogether for my first year, and I got about two thousand dollars of spending money 
in my first quarter. Excellent. Okay, thank you. So the advice was to apply to scholarships, right? Apply to scholarships and, and and volunteer. Excellent. Can you pass the mic down to Mr. Benjamin? You, Mr. Benjamin, you have a loud voice. Go ahead. Actually, I, I, if you just Google it, there's there's thousands of scholarships, right? Um, uh, there's the Ford Foundation, okay, and there's also the uh, the Gates Smell the Millennium um, scholarships. There's many, actually. So, Mr. Benjamin, you, I want you to Google it. There's like like tons. Also, our, our career advice um, actual office has many of them, so you just go there as well. Okay. Yeah, I want it for the class as well. I want them to hear it. But um, as a okay. senior, I'll give you guys some advice. Um, I actually was a transfer student, and I transferred here from a RCC, which is right down the street. Um, it was huge for me coming here and just, like, realizing that I don't owe any money over there. It was hella free for me. But um, um, for people who are already here, you clearly don't want to drop out and go to RCC. Um <laughs> So what I would advise you to do is, like, really find information. Information is power. And when you, you can go to RCC and t take summer classes instead of taking summer classes here. You can take them at RCC. Um, they'll be way cheaper, right. massively cheaper, like, phenomenally cheaper. It's crazy. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, it, it transfers right over here really easy, especially because, like, they try to build their curriculum to match UCR's curriculum deliberately because they're right next to UCR. So I would really advise you to take advantage of the community college that's right down the street from you guys and um, really just try to save up. And like all the seniors in here were saying, get your hustle on, man. Like, I feel like a part of going to college is learning how to hustle and learning what situation you're in and learning how to prioritize. It's not just coming here and getting an education. Like, you have to learn, like, what you're good at and what you're not good at and make it work for you. You know what I mean? So that's all I'd say. All right, excellent. Personal development, that's important. Okay. All right, guys, let's take a sheet of paper. Let's go over um, Diverse and Name Only by uh, Holani, uh, Rana T. Holani. All right, so let's uh, take a sheet of notes. All right, everyone else, everyone in class, take a sheet of notes. Uh, if you can divide it in three halves and tell me your interactions in the last three days and be specific the people that you interacted with in terms of their gender, their race, their religion, their age, sexuality. I'd also like to include education, so I'm going to put that in. Education. For the last three days, you're going to divide your, your uh, so that, what's today, Tuesday? So you're going to do Monday, Sunday, and Saturday. Who did you interact with? And uh, be specific and uh, give us the gender, race, religion, age, sexuality, and education. Last three days. Everyone you interacted with him. Some people interacted with nobody, so they put zero. Okay, so who did you interact with yesterday, the day before? So Monday, Sunday, and Saturday. So you're not going to include, you don't include school generally, and you don't include work. Okay, so you don't include school. It actually be, has usually personal interactions.
All right, if you optionally, you could switch papers right now and show the next person if you want to. It's optional. Uh, please pass down the second microphone if you have it. If you pass it down. All right, does anyone want to share who they're at chat with? All right, uh, I'll give you the microphone. <laughs> my weekend was real special. <laughs> my weekend? Yes, it works. Okay. My weekend was real special. I met four beautiful ladies. Uh, one was Bo, one was Joy, one was Lola, and one was Aria. Um, they're all, their sexuality was all female. Um, their education is probably like a pole dancing class or something like that. And uh, I'm not saying anything. I'm just telling you how my weekend went. Okay, so let, we don't need the names. Just tell us specifically the race, religion, age, oh. sexuality, education. So oh, this no is specifics. A, this is the good part. Okay. Uh, one was like uh, Brazilian. Okay. One was Spanish. I want to say one was like Norwegian, but I don't know for sure. I didn't ask her. Oh, okay. so Mr. Manoush, they're all women and the race. Okay, what is the religion? Uh, money. Okay. <laughs> all right, and uh, do you have a? And then education, you said. Okay. All right, great. All right, next person, if you can volunteer, put, put, pass it forward. Okay, to Melody, pass it forward. Yeah. So, okay, the three people, they were, two of them were male, one of them was female. Race, one of them was Filipino, one is white, and one is Mexican. Like, she identifies as Mexican. Um, religion, one of them is agnostic. The other one doesn't really have one. Like, he's still trying to figure it out. Then one's Catholic, and the age 19, 20, and 39. Um, sexuality, they're all straight. Is that what they would say? Is that what you're, okay. Mm -hmm. Education, one is a second year, one is a third year, and then um, high school graduate. I don't all know right, excellent, one. okay. All right, guys, uh, did you find any similarities in the people that you looked at? Did you have? Okay. So this article is actually very interesting. It's actually cited in uh, several Supreme Court uh, uh, trials, right? And it's, it's, it's about diversity. Actually, it focuses on San Jose State. Is San Jose State similar to us? It's close to us? Anyone from San Jose here? Similar, okay. So maybe a little more Southeast Asian there, a little more Oaxacan there, okay. So close, I think we're, we're uh, UCR is ranked as one of the most diverse universities in America, right? Okay, so we, they are also very diverse, okay. So let's talk about the results, okay, uh, in interaction. So basically, writes down, um, the article is called Diverse and Name Only, and one of the pushes is diversity, right? Um, would you say that at UCR we have a push t towards diversity? 
Yes, right? So it's like we're supposed to be very diverse. In fact, if the entire world were to disappear today, we probably could re rebuild the world with our class alone, okay? We have probably like 50 ethnicities in our class, over from over 120 countries you guys are from. So that's just a lot of diversity, okay? But the, the question is, and, and remember, there's a question mark at the end, diverse in name only. Is diversity pushed as in name only, okay? Because they found that um, very shocking results. Can someone read it? Hello. Okay. Halalani results. <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know. <laughs> Most research on forced interaction. A lot of research on only black and white interactions. Thus, this article fills a gap in the literature. 1.53% said engage in at least one interactions. 2.28% have intercultural interactions at right. restaurants and retail. It's, it's actually it's just forced. one. Sorry. It's probably forced. <laughs> okay. Because you know people be harassing people. Yeah. Okay. Students in a multicultural university do not interact. All right, everyone write that down. That is shocking. Thank you for reading that, okay? So basically what, what this uh, artist, uh, I'm sorry, this uh, social scientist found was that most interaction at school is forced, right? Although San Jose State is a very diverse school and they push diversity just like we do as you are. We push diversity. But when it comes down to it, right, students don't interact inter interculturally, right? Uh, and they, they very much interact with people who look just like them, okay? So 53%... Uh, students said that they engage in at least one intercultural action. Okay, one. Quick, okay. quick question. Yes. When it means intercultural interactions, what does it mean by that? You know, it was self-defined, right? And so uh, that's a great, that's an excellent question. Um, they, I think a lot of people view it as maybe racial or ethnic, right? But they wanted to actually give the definition back to the San Jose students, right? So um, they didn't define it for the student, actually. The student, they had eth they had categories where they had different ethnicities and different racial groups, but they let the students self-define. That's a wonderful question, okay? So self-defined, okay? All right, so so that, that is, so although San Jose State, just like UCR, only 50% said they inter had an interaction. Remember, but this is the mo one of the most like diverse universities like us, okay? And then um, when they did have interactions, right, it was actually in places that are 28% who, who had interactions, had it in places like a restaurant or retail. So I know one of you said, I work at a certain place. That would be a forced interaction. Um, can someone uh, t take the mic over there to Mr. Chris? Uh, yes. Again, I think it was like personal interaction, um, having a personal, maybe a personal talk, or maybe going out for dinner, or having a movies, um, something like a friendship, like a friendship, right? Yeah. And so when they asked Mr. Chris, these students, do you have any interactions? Basically, most of them said no, right? And then when they did have interaction, it was forced. It was forced, right? So um, yes, back there, go ahead. Right, it, it was self-defined, but uh, I think what the researchers wanted to find out was interracial interactions, right? And again, San Jose State looks just like us. Like, it's, it was self-defined. Like, what did they view as, in, in, uh, uh, but I think the, uh, they looked at it as interracial, okay? All right, so let's, I'm, I'm going to break this up into two, okay? All right, uh, let's have someone read it because it's pretty shocking, and I'm going to split up in two slides. Can someone read it? I can read it. Okay. Latino students most interacted with white European students, 35%. Put this down. Okay. Inter interacted equally with black, 25%, and Asian, 25% students. Black, 45% interaction with white and Latino, um, so that's 43%. White, 65% with Asian, but class-related only. Asians, 46% with other Asians, and 43% white class-related. 
Excellent. Let's unpack that. Thank you. Okay. All right. So number one, most people at San Jose State don't interracially interact, right? A huge portion. And when they do interracially interact, it tends to be on, on forced interaction. So like a retail job or a restaurant, right? I have to engage with them in a, in a kind of personal way. Now, one ethnic group actually interacts with everyone, though. What ethnic group, guys? Latino students. Latino students at San Jose State actually interacts with everyone. So what is that saying to us, guys? Are we all racist except for Latinos? And why, why? Why is this? Why is this? Uh, Mr. Benjamin, question. Go ahead. Um, you can't parties like here, right? Well, interpersonal interaction is your personal, is a party a general large, is that interpersonal yeah. interaction? I've met like plenty of people like okay. Deep friendship, okay. Bondage, well, okay, all right, okay. Uh, uh, yes, go ahead. Um, well, I think Hispanics, well, they're Hispanics from a lot, like, it's, they're Hispanics from a lot of different backgrounds, and so I think they Yes, excellent. Where's the, right, send it over here, send it here, Good. go ahead. So there are Hispanics that tend to feel more, I mean, feel like they have more in common with, with black people or with white people. I mean, it's just, they are kind of like in the middle of the spectrum. They, ha they hang with everyone. So if you look at the interaction, they're interacting with uh, Asian students, 25%, uh, African American, 25%, um, equally with African American and Anglo. So that's, a, that's everyone, yeah. okay? What is the deal, guys? Why are Latino students actually having deep interaction, right, that's not forced with everyone, where everyone else is like avoiding people? Why? I also, I think it's their culture, too. They're very warm, they're very um, welcoming. And the, I've, I, I come from a Latino family, so it, they're just very all around, like, personable. They just welcome you. So cultural, you so you're saying cultural background, maybe? Yeah. OK, excellent. Anyone else, guys? Why are Latino students interacting with everyone? I don't know about, um, well, I guess because uh, I guess it could be they could have had a defined ca category as Latino, but in most cases when they ask you to label your race, sometimes in certain charts they will only have like Asian, white, or black, and then sometimes people who come from like Latin descent, they may have to define or put themselves in another category. I don't know, but I, I don't know. I, I just, this just confuses me because looking at, or looking at my own interaction, like what about mixed students in this case too? That is a gr great question. They didn't test. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't one of the test questions. Yeah. Right? Okay. That's a great question, right? What if you're mixed? Then who is your interaction, right? That that's a great question, Mr. Benjamin. Uh, okay. This is San Jose, right? As Cal State San Jose. We're similar, yes. They're both Hispanic serving universities, yes. This is the numbers, guys? Numbers? Okay. Just like huge number. Okay. 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 That that's probably a factor. Yes. Um, in my opinion, I think um, Latinos or Hispanics get more along with different races because some of us are confused for different races, uh -huh. like. Um, I don't know if you guys understand what I mean. Like, yeah, well, yeah. I well, think Rasa that's why. Yeah, like sometimes they ask me if I'm black, but I'm from Acapulco, so. Okay. And then like right. some girls look white when they're Mexican, and some girls look um, Mexican and they're Philippines. So I don't know. Yeah. So I, that's what I think. So the, the huge, yeah. So there is guys. Have you heard this 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 uh, this. Uh, pan-ethnic identity called La Raza, right? Where you are from the earth and you're actually from every ethnicity, right? It's like a, it's called myst um, magical, magical race or something, right? Um, that's a huge in Chicano studies, okay. Yes, um, Well, I mean, this is kind of a tangent, but one thing that I'm not crazy about is, okay, well, Chicanos are, they're traditionally known to be, to being like Mexican-American, you know? That's that is like, correct, yes. Yeah. 1960s the, civil rights, yes, yeah, exactly. So they're Mexican-American, right. but at UCR, the Hispanic program is supposed to fall under Chicano, the Chicano oh, program. Really? Okay. Like, there's no separate sect for Hispanic students. Okay. And, I mean, I don't really know. Like, I think I asked someone once, like, where do the rest of the Hispanic students go? And they're like, oh, they're considered Chicano students, too. Oh. But that's not really a fair assessment to make because 
We're not all Chicano. Okay, that's a great point. Um, Chicano was actually something specific invented in the 1960s, specifically of fighting for Mexican American rights. Right. But I mean, yeah. like you go to the offices and there's like the African American student, you know, or associate association, everything. They have like Asian American or like mm -hmm. Asian students. They only have Chicano. Oh, and I didn't know that. There's no Hispanic that. student. You Interesting. Know. I, I didn't know. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay. All right. So interesting enough, look at African American students. They they mostly interact with uh, white and Latino students, and white students. Who do they mostly interact with? Asian students, right? So write that down in your notes. But guys, Mr. Arian, it's for class only. So are these two groups? Are they using each other? It's not interpersonal. It's not like having lunch or going to movies, okay, or getting clothes. It's for class, okay. So again, that's something interesting. Now, I, I do teach Asian American studies, so Asians mostly interact with other what? Asians, but that's actually a misnomer, right? Because uh, there's actually uh, also follow-up studies that Asians only interact with their own what? Ethnic group, right? So Asians don't interact with other Asians. Koreans hang out with Koreans. Cambodians hang out with Cambodians. Japanese hang out with Japanese, right? And this is something you can see every single day at Cal Poly Pomona. Who's been to Cal Poly Pomona? Okay, Cal Poly Pomona is the one of the most segregated ethnically Asian and Latino uh, schools. You can see it very clearly, right? Um, uh, if you look at the Chicano or Mexican American or Latino students, they're also d very divided. If you're in a, in a fraternity, you tend to be second generation, right? The undocumented by themselves, um, uh, the Oaxacan students are also by themselves, so they're not, you know, interacting, right? So you can probably follow up on that Latino study, and if you go to Cal Poly, you find something different. Okay, all right, Mr. Aaron, go. Yes, there's a handful, yes. <laughs> but many at Cal Poly, though. Many at Cal Poly, yeah. And uh, Cal State Long Beach, a lot at Cal State Long Beach. Huge, huge number. Yes? Wouldn't this same study, even if, if it is similar to UCR, still be technically different? Because, I mean, I, know, I guess I like to think that we're, we're better. But, um, okay. like, looking at my own list of, like, the people that I've interacted with, like, I got, like, a variety package. And I don't know if everyone else is kind of the same. I mean, it's not like a shit ton of people who speak the language. But I don't know. I don't like to think that people, I don't know. Like I said, what, when it comes to people who may be mixed or have misrepresented identities, they might define themselves only by that specific race. So that might be not, that, I just don't that is a great comment because a lot of people are mixed, actually, quote unquote. As an anthropologist, I, I have to say again, there's no such thing as race. We're all mixed. We're all mixed, right? No one here is like quote pure, right? No one can be in a box. I know everyone in this class is is actually uh, very mixed. You just, you know, your your grandparents, or they got around. Everyone got around. Your ancestors, they, we're all from, we are descended from Africa. Yes. Where's the, uh, the, pass it, pass it, uh-huh, okay. Okay, so I want you to like, hear you. <laughs> All right, hello? Anyway, um, like, it's, it's kind of true that, like, when you think about it, even in school, like, most white kids hit up, like, their Asian friends for help with homework. Or mm, really, <laughs> it's 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 true. Like when you need help with studying or something, like you kind of figure like, oh, like you know, Asians are known to be like the smarter people in the class. So the, the model minority myth, yes. Yeah, okay, and myth, yeah. like that's who you ask for help usually. Or like black kids, at least at my school, um, seem to be more attracted to like white girls or Latinas. So that's why black guys would you know typically be like talking to them. But it's like, yeah, there there were only 15, but um, <laughs> okay. I don't know. It's just like this study actually does kind of make sense. Like when you makes really sense. think okay. about it, like your peers around you and who you talk to, like even though you might still talk to other people, like think of the reasons why you talk to them. Right. And who's your close friend, right? Not forced interaction. Okay. Over here, you can pass the mic over there quickly. Let's go. Yes. If you have a loud voice, if you have a loud voice, that'd be even better. <clears throat> Hello. All right. So it actually makes sense to me because I see this like in where I live in Los Angeles, okay. which is supposed to be a really diverse city. 
I mean, yeah, there's a lot of like different races and ethnicities, but they're still segregated to a certain extent. You're right. You're right. <clears throat> like you know, well, you know what I mean, right? And even here in in um, UCR. <clears throat> like when I see the rush week, is that what it's called? When all the uh, fraternities oh. and sororities come out, mm -hmm. you, like you could tell how like some are Asian, some are more like white and Latino. I mean, you know, you could see the separation, but I mean, I mean, you could see it, right? <laughs> Excellent. Oh, sorry, what, what's your name? Steve. Steve, guys, let's bring it down because I want to know what, what is the divisions here, okay? Because I've been hearing a lot from my other students about how there's some sort of rift between African American students and African students from Africa who are like, you know, they're traditionally African American students who were raised here and some who are uh, seemingly you think they're African American, but their parents are from Africa, right? So apparently uh, I've been hearing that there's division. So let's actually bring it back to UCR. Guys, you go to the school. What is the division here? What's the division here? Tell me, guys. What? How are you guys divided? You guys go to school here every single day. You must know. Pass it down. Pass it down. <coughs> yes, I do. Hello. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, I bring it back to UCR, but in high school, I went to a real diverse high school, and I have friends that, and we all hung out together, regardless if you're white, black, Phil I had a lot of Filipino friends. My best friend's Filipino. The guy I'm with is white. Okay, so I think it's, it, I, and I'm from Vallejo, so I think it's from where you grew up. You grew and, up? Then, okay. and then the junior college I went to was predominantly black, so of okay. course, you know, it's black people mess with the black people. But here, I feel like at like okay, we're split up like athletes mess with athletes. Ah, like, we're we're split up like that. All right, who's an athlete in our class? Who's our athlete? <laughs> athletes, do you have friends who are not athletes? Yeah. All right, who got who of here? Do you uh, non athletes? Do you have friends who are athletes? It's like two people in our class. Okay, well, I've heard that before. Athletes separating. Yeah, There's athletes studying that. Athletes, but I'm used to talking to like I could get along with a lot of people. So you know, I try to be friends with Asians. Mm -hmm. Asians ain't messing with me. You know, okay. and I really be trying okay. to talk to people. You know, okay. and then you know some white people. You know, I'm cool. Like you know, they don't want to talk to me. I don't know what okay. it is. Okay, you know, people are to themselves, but it's really true. Like Asians stick together. Like I swear to God. Let, let's let's cl let's clarify that, right? Because so true. I swear to God, they don't try to send. There's a study that, um, interesting enough, if you're interested in Asians, there actually is even a scarier study. Not only do Asians hang out with their own ethnic group, right? Koreans with Koreans, Chinese with Chinese, but they actually interact with their own class level, right? So only upper class Koreans with upper class Koreans. They will not hang out with lower class Koreans, right? So yeah, what, what is the deal, guys? Is that true? Is, is that, so there's an athlete division at UCR. Okay, and, yeah. then, and then you said there's Asians. I out. think what there's else? also a, like an academic in a sense. Like, for example, most of the people that I've managed to bond or connect with are people who are either pursuing like maybe the same major or a similar major to okay. me. Honestly, I don't really go, you know, I may not be going to, you know, well, I'm in the Bournes, you know, because our class is in here. But I don't really know a lot of engineers because I'm not an engineering major. Okay. I tend to tend to hang out, and it's not because I don't, hang, you know, I want to be cool with meeting engineers, but you tend to kind of segregate based so you, off of hobbies and your okay. academics, like your career goals. So you guys are divided by major? Is that it? You guys divide by major? I wouldn't no? say major specifically, but I'd say more like your interests of career. Interests of career, okay. I think, uh, going along with what she said, I, I think it's just like, again, you can't really answer this without just thinking about your own individual experience. But I guess, throwing mine in there, um, I may not be an engineering major, but like I'm always in Chung, like computer science side. But that's just because I, ch I decided to get to know my professor. And then I started grading for him and all that stuff. So it's kind of like, it depends on what you do with your time here, too. Like, just get to know your professors, your TAs, all that. You'll really honestly open up your social circle. That's really honestly it. Uh, the, w <clears throat> uh, the way I see it, it's, uh, and this is coming from a guy who really doesn't like hang out with many people often. Uh, I guess it's usually uh, there's I guess there's really no clear division because like like she said, there's like Asians like that's one thing I know is that not no offense like there's a lot of Asians who stick together and I don't know why. <laughs> okay. But then here's another thing. But here's another thing though is that I also know that there's a lot of other people that are grouped together and but they're of different like races. Let's just say okay. that. But uh, I think it's more likely just. Cause there's like different, many different subdivisions, I guess you could say. Cause I know, I guess you could say the people I hang out with, they're more like towards the people that they already know and their friends. Oh, okay. Or you could also say it's also with people who are like dorming with them. Like if you know people and you're dorming with them, you usually okay. hang out with those people. So okay. I guess there's no really clear 
division, if you think about it. Okay, so you're friends with your dorm mates? Is that it? Friends with dorm mates? Okay. All right, we're uh, pass it that way. Yes. All right. Okay. Mr. Benjamin, you want to scream out something? Okay. Yes. Yes, go ahead. Um, I think the division is we're all competing with one another, and the pie is only so big, you know? Are you competing? You're, no one's competing against each other here. You're not a. Uh, no, you're none. You are independent soldiers here. Tripping. Okay. All right. Um, yes. Yeah, so let's end up with. We'll go to the next slide. Go ahead. <laughs> and Mr. Benjamin, you will go in as well. Go ahead. Go, yes. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, like, if you're in Hello. If, okay. if if you're in CNAS, like you tend to hang out with CNAS people. Like all the people who I study with or all the people who like I've met here have typically been CNAS besides this class. This is okay. my first class I've taken in CHAS. Okay. And like now like the only friends I have in CHAS would be like Chris and Ashley. Like the people that like I know that I'm comfortable with, like talking to and hanging around are the people I meet in class. But you know, like, that's the thing. Like, most CNAS kids take, like, those straight science courses, straight math courses, and they take it together. Okay, so they build a bond, right? Yeah. So I'm glad you're friends with Ms. Ashley and Mr. Chris. Yeah, Chris. so, also, like, okay. you have SI sessions, and, like, you stick with those people. And, wow, like, okay. You, you just tend to do that. Even BCOE kids, like, I've noticed my friend David only hangs out with BCOE kids. Okay, excellent. And Mr. Benjamin is screaming out, and let's have the last two right here. I want to go to the next slide. Go ahead, Mr. Benjamin. I didn't plan on screaming out. Uh, okay. <laughs> Two tall people. Okay. Okay. Right back over here. All right. So, um, my <laughs> shut up. And uh, give it back to that person back there. When you're okay, done. I yes. shall. I'll be the delivery boy. Yeah. Um, so, my observation of UCR since I've been here, and I've kind of been observing UCR since, like, even though I w uh, went to RCC, I would always come up here freshman year and look. It sounded really creepy. Um, <laughs> but so my observation is UCR is a very diverse school. And so I don't think the diversity is broken down into like blacks with blacks or Asians with Asians. I think it's a very diverse school, but it's also not a, um, I'm just putting all these factors together. It's not a college um, city. It doesn't like um, perpetuate like a college living lifestyle. So essentially when people come here, they feel like there's nothing to do. And I feel like when there's nothing to do, you end up joining a group. And okay. so groups, um, hang out with, with okay. groups. And so like for me, for instance, I'm in a fraternity. And when you're in a fraternity, you pretty much get to know the whole Greek system. And so me, I hang out with a lot of Greek people, whether it's, you know, um, different sororities or different fraternities. And that system within itself is very diverse. So I couldn't say that I'm restricted to like the blacks or the Asians or but, what have you. But Mr. Benjamin, is that when it's itself a, a sort of segregating because it's yeah, Greek it, and non-Greek, yeah, but right? it's, a, it's a different kind of segregation, right? Okay. So I feel like okay. what she just brought up, like sports, hang out with sports people. I know sports, people okay. who like can be black in sports or Hispanic and if everybody plays volleyball, the volleyball team hang out with the volleyball team. You know what I mean? Like you guys are working out together, you find yourself occupying each other's time. Um, when I go to ASP, I, um, and I see a lot of the African students and they're hanging out with each other. It's not necessarily because they're African, but a lot of them are in the same clubs or are in the same fraternity, okay. like the Alphas or um, the Nigerian Student Union. You okay. know what I mean? So I feel like within these social groups, you find people that hang out because they join that specific group. Now, if you join a group that's diverse, you're going to end up you know, raising the, the diversity bar for yourself. But UCR is segregated by groups and not necessarily by um, ethnicities. That's Excellent. my observation. Excellent, great point. If you pass down there. Right. Right. Oh. All right, guys, so is that true? It's fraternity and then non-fraternity? Is that another division here? All right, and then you said athletes and non-athletes? Okay. Raise your hand if you guys are friends with an international student. Actual deep interaction, not for school-related, okay? Take them out for lunch. Take them out to movies. Do not ask them for homework help, especially language help, right? Okay, back there, yes. So I just want to say that... Um I think the division, there's no clear reason. There's no, like, um, one reason. There's, you can't pinpoint a reason or two to explain the division between different cultures. I think it's easier. I'm Vietnamese, so it's easier for me to interact with someone who, someone, some other Vietnamese person that I don't know. Okay. But it could be something that we grew up with, something that our parents went through. And, you know, it's easy just to hold a conversation 
So, I mean, anecdotally, I've tried to interact with black people, but we just can't hold a conversation. There's nothing common there and and unless we have the same class and we're talking about, you know, like the homework, then that's maybe that's, that's regional cuz uh, it's interesting cuz I grew up in the Midwest and all most Asians in the Midwest hang out with primarily African Americans. Like that that's who their close friends are. So, if you actually like go to Colorado or Illinois where I'm from, when you see uh, interaction, you tend to see it with Asians and African Americans. They tend to be like in the same group. Okay. All right, guys. Another disturbing thing that this this study, and please write down, is that there's exclusion. Right. Just like there's a lack of interaction with everyone, there is exclusion. And unfortunately, this study, and again, this is one study out of many studies who came out with the same conclusion. Again, the same conclusion. This is this one study. Right. And they looked at uh, San Jose State, but many studies came came with the same story. There is exclusion among students to African American males. Write that down. Okay? Write that down. It's a, that African American males are excluded in terms of they have the least interactions with Asians, right? Asians and African Americans are not interacting together, right? And also Anglos are not interacting as much, right? The one group they interact with mostly is Latinos. Okay? What is the deal? So is there is there exclusion discrimination towards a student in class? Do you find? Because there's a lot of negative repercussions, right? If the whole class or the whole university, in this case, San Jose State, right? If everyone says that they don't interact with African Americans, particularly males, right? What is the negative effect of that? What is the negative effect? Of, what is the worst case scenario? What is the, it's called the chilly environment. What's the negative effect? Scared, okay? No one wants to be your friend. What else? Scream it out. Stereotyping, right? You feel like you're stereotyping. If people don't want to interact with you, st stereotyping. What about when you study and you don't? You're the one person that's not including the study group. Right? You don't. You don't. You want. You don't want to try harder. You don't want to care anymore. No, no, you right? Want to maybe you want to, but maybe some people don't like the opposite as well. Right? Both. Right? If people exclude you, right? If people exclude you, you might want to. You might feel. You know. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So one of the one of the conclusions they found was that actually African American males uh, do actually have a higher dropout rate, right? But, and think about it. It's uh, they're obviously qualified to get into the college, brilliant students, but if everyone collectively as a student is excluding right a certain ethnic and everyone's doing it right because this sounds the state they they it's a couple thousand dollars a couple thousand students that they they right collectively if everyone's doing that that has a, a huge effect right so I want you guys to think about that and I want you guys to be aware of your interactions too because when we are aware of something we tend to be able to fix it right so so um, any more comments on that yes Mr. Steve Class combination, okay. So class reason, are you, are you guys interacting by class? Like economic class, right? Economic class? Could be, could be. Um, yes, go ahead. Yes. You're in the same school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great point, guys. When you're not included, in, when you're not included in study groups, right? That has a detrimental effect to you, right? Uh, that that's um, okay. <laughs> All right, guys, so I really do want you to think about that, okay? So for our next class, um, I want you to go through your next class, and I want you to observe at UCR who hangs out with who. Who is excluded, okay? So when you walk out, not today, it's dark, but when you, later when you go out, um, look, walk through the library. Who's hanging out with who? Who's excluded, right? And think of the effect that you might have. And if someone asks you to be in their study group, say yes, right? All right, wonderful class, guys. I'll see you next class. Uh, uh, excuse me, next class is canceled. Remember, you guys are going on an optional trip if you want to go. No class on Thursday. Do not come to class on Thursday. Once again, do not come to class. Okay, no one will be here. Okay, 210 people, no one here.
But then you, um, it's like kind of, you know, between these two grades. Is it late? Is that the issue? No, it's because right. um, I didn't write up to half a page. Oh, okay. I thought yes. it was up to two to three. No, it's two, 2.5, yeah. actually. You so can actually see why. it um, in the thing. It's, uh, so it's, it's missing, a, actually, a huge portion. Of the, yeah. Yeah, so um, let me take a look. See, it says 2.5. Yeah, yeah I didn't so catch it's missing. That part, yeah. yeah, so uh, um, thank you so much. I, I will give this to you. 